Hello everybody. Um, a couple of announcements as we move forward uh, in our post ice storm power outage reality. Um, just as many of you who live in the uh, North Georgia Atlanta metro area you know experience the uh, getting trapped in 11 for 11 hours in your car and so forth um, uh, where I'm located geographically my power is out for about mm, 20 hours or so um, this past uh, Wednesday it's it's a uh, uh, but we are now kind of like coalescing and regrouping a little bit uh, please make an, a note and this is a procedural note that um, I've posted a an updated schedule of when to submit assignments now please do not become anxious because just as you had problems turning in your work I'm playing, I'm doing a little bit of catching up with the grading. So please don't become anxious and expect, uh, you know, a grade to appear, um, uh, you know, as quite as quickly as I would like it to appear. Uh, I'm going to be working on grading Durkheim uh, and uh, we'll finish up that uh, early this week. It is Sunday night tonight as we speak. And um, we'll be looking at Max Weber uh, as well. Please note that there is a little overlap there. Um, we do need to catch up and get somewhat back on schedule. But I have posted a new schedule in three places. One, I've emailed a schedule to you. Two, I have uh, posted an announcement uh, on the news board of our course website for theory. And three, uh, I've uh, posted an updated syllabus. Uh, it is in the first module where it says updated syllabus. Okay, uh, so much for uh, procedural announcements. Um, we'd like to talk a little bit uh, now about Max Weber. No one covers the breadth of sociological thought any more comprehensively than Max Weber. In his lifetime as a scholar, he covers the individual and collective rational and not non-rational modalities of action. Please see figure 4.3 on page 136 for a thorough blueprint of the core ideas and the basis of action in Weber's theory. We examined five readings in Weber's work. I'd really like you to focus on four of them and I'm going to give you a brief overview of these right now. This should lay the groundwork for your reading of these sections. Please also pay close attention to the introductory passages that um, um, that Scott Appleroot and uh, has written uh, for each of these as well. Um, they're going to be, and these introductions are going to become a little shorter. But Max Weber is really the breadth and depth of his work covers just about every major area of social life, from music to politics to religion to the economy to uh, kind of the basis for uh, a lot of 20 and 21st century critical theory, functional theory that we're going to look at later. Um, he's, he was an expansive scholar. Uh, um, in Weber's first reading, in the first reading we're going to talk about, it's the Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. Now, Weber assigns to religion um, and religious life a much different uh, function uh, in the social uh, uh, processes that, uh, and order of society than did Marx, who saw religion as a way for the ruling class to control subordinate classes, or by contrast, Durkheim, who viewed religious life uh, as a fundamental form of social integration, or how societies coalesced or, or, or cohered, and how communities did in particular. In fact, you might say that Marx and Durkheim had diametrically opposed views of what religion means in society. For Weber, religion was more of a kind of an independent variable and a corollary to the power for Marx as an anal analysis or social cohesion in Durkheim's. Weber was specifically looking uh, in, in this analysis, in this reading, at the practice of religion in Puritan New England, uh, what will become Massachusetts. The Puritans represented a departure 
uh, and what had been the religious tradition in the West, as typified by the Catholic Church. After the Protestant Reformation, uh, individuals became responsible in various Protestant traditions for their own salvation. Work reflected a calling or a manifestation of what God uh, intended for the individual in terms of work you were called to do. You were called to be a cooper, that's somebody who made barrels, or a blacksmith, or a shoemaker, or to work with cloth, or to, or to you know, be a farmer, and so forth. This is a major departure from uh, uh, the pre-Protestant Catholic tradition in Western Europe, um, uh, which basically uh, just called for your your, your kind of devotion uh, and adherence to authority. Um, and this is an idea, this idea of a calling was central to Protestantism, particularly as it was playing out in the early 1600s in colonial Massachusetts. Protestantism wasn't a monolithic belief, though. We have to understand what Protestantism means then compared to what we think of what it means today. In some traditions, specifically the Puritans, who were based on the, uh, the teachings of John Calvin, there is a belief in predestination. Unlike uh, contemporary forms of uh, Christian uh, religious life where one makes an individual decision about uh, their salvation, uh, predestination held that uh, it was a belief that God had preordained your destiny at a time. You're either in the elect or destined to go to heaven in this tradition, or you are not. Your calling should reflect this in terms of its success. If you are successful in your calling, if you reflected God's grace by working hard, then you would accrue wealth. Now, Puritans didn't view wealth the same way we do. There was no uh, consumption economy. In other words, uh, to consume or to, to have outward displays of wealth was considered to be sinful as well. So what did you do with all this um, wealth you were accruing from your hard, God-given work that you were doing? Well, you just reinvested it and you, you reinvested in your business and you made more wealth. So what are those who weren't successful? Well, failure at once calling meant that you were not one of God's chosen ones. There was no outward sign of God's grace. That meant you were not, according to the Puritan way of thinking, going to heaven. While there were other rational innovations, uh, they point out uh, in the introduction to this reading, that led to the domination of capitalism as a central modality of economic organization in the colonies that were to become the U.S., this Puritan idea of the elect uh, predicated on success versus those who were unsuccessful, according to Weber, became unmoored from its religious beliefs. In other words, they left this idea of predestination behind. Um, but it, it does form the non-rational basis, okay, for the ideology of capitalism, okay. That's a belief in individual agency, okay, one rises and falls based on their own merits, um, as the reason for success or failure, uh, and an association with wealth as positive, and poverty as somehow morally suspect. This is a belief that permeates uh, American culture uh, and thinking today, and it's certainly an ideological underpinning for a lot of our current political systems. But it had its roots in this Puritanism and pre- um, the pre-American uh, colonial uh, America in Massachusetts, pre-United States colonial America. In the next reading, the distribution of power within the political community, class, status, and party, what Weber does is to expand Marx's concept of social class. Social class for Weber does exist. It's somewhat analogous to Marx's concept. There is class conflict. There are uh, it is based on whether one is property or, or unproperty, whether one owns property or does not. 
For Weber, though, the central question is how do interests shape individuals' actions on the individual level and the organization of society at the collective level? And there is something more going on for Weber than the economy alone, than class, social class. You know, for, for Marx, that's the, uh, that's the penultimate independent variable. For Weber, it may be one of a series of independent variables that affects the dependent variable, individual action, constraint, and social organization. A social class is a way of grouping people based on whether or not they have property. A status has to do with one's um, position, their social location, and how they are regarded by society. Membership in a status group can enhance or hinder, in, hinder an individual's life chances. Weber was implicitly thinking about the situation of institutionalized anti-Semitism. This isn't really covered much in the reading, uh, but he was thinking about anti-Semitism in Europe uh, that barred uh, Jews uh, in pre-industrial Europe from doing certain sorts of work are seeking political positions in pre-modern Europe uh, which came back to dominate and you know, create the horrific uh, uh, social order of, of you know, World War II in Europe as well. This concept can be implied in we, when we move to the context of the United States uh, to race or gender or social class, disability, ableism, sexuality, um, certain statuses favor certain groups over other at, at the expense of others. Um, you know, Weber also was aware that there were people, there were there were some vestiges of nobility floating around in Europe, and these people had um, they, they had a pretty easy time of it. You know, and he was from uh, you know from that as well. That doesn't necessarily transfer so well over to a culture in the United States. Party, Weber's third concept here, so we've talked about class, we've talked about status, and we've talked about party, uh, has to do with power. Power is the ability to pursue the strategic accomplishment of political goals that have real effects. And this res power resides in political party and political organization. You know, from the Nazis to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the People's Democratic uh, People's Party of the Democratic Republic of North of Korea, which is North Korea, to or the Democrats and Republicans in American democracy, to parliamentary multi-party traditions in Europe, um, um, parties have the ability to at least in some way wield power. A party has the ability to force its will to impose taxes, draft military personnel pursue public works, build dams. Okay, so that's class, status, and party. Now we want to